Come on. Sit around the campfire. It's been really fun talking about the draft and free agency so far. But we've got to have a talk. Let's discuss. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Locked On Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Underscore, follow the podcast, Locked On AZ Cards. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked On Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, leave a like, leave a comment, whatever you please. If you'd like to go to wherever you listen to your podcast and leave me a review, I'd be okay with that. And if you'd rather not, you just want to hang out, I'm good with that also. Thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcasts. Um, This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I've got a competitive side, and it's a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. So there's a couple things I want to discuss today. Um, A little bit of a grab baggy kind of thing, a little all over the place, but with some cohesion, especially in the first and second segment. There's something that hasn't really been discussed because the Cardinals have been devoid of talent over the last year or so, and, you know, the second part of the year before with Kyler Murray out with the ACL injury. It's a topic I want to discuss, and I'm going to do it in the third segment. Can this offense be good enough to where it would pretty much render Kyler Murray running the ball obsolete, or should it? Or should they double down on him running? It's just an interesting conversation where you're starting to see this roster, you know, mold into shape, especially on the offensive side. And uh, it's just a it's just a question because, you know, how quickly we forget Kyler Murray's legs were the catalyst for so many things, whether it be broken plays, whether it be him not making his reads right early in his career, whether it be him being a little antsy in the pocket early in his career and, and evading the pocket right away. We've seen some of the most electric runs in the NFL since Kyler has come into, come into the league at the feet of Kyler Murray. So with an actual talented, balanced offense now, do you want to see him run the ball less? Do you want to see it to be, be an accent and not a nuance to his game? So we'll discuss that in the final segment. Um, Zay Jones is visiting the Arizona Cardinals today after visiting Tennessee earlier in the week. It's either yesterday or, or late last week. I don't cover the Titans. If you want to check out the Titans, Locked On Locked on Titans, Tyler Rowland, uh, my buddy who I host Locked On NFL Thursday with, Zay Jones visiting the Cardinals. I've mentioned this over the last week or so. The Cardinals need help. I'll discuss in the second segment. But, the you know, sit around and let's have a conversation segment is going to be right now. It has been it has been so fun since the moment Monty Osfor took over watching this team shed its skin, I guess, and emerge as this new being. And while it'll always have the Bidwell name on it, so it's not always devoid of any sort of history and and malcontent and dysfunction in the past. Everything Monty Osborne, Jonathan Gannon, and, the, and the, all the coaches that have come in have done is just shift the trajectory. They're doing things differently. So that's fun. And it's different. And it's beneficial. Cardinals were the best four-win team in football last year. I think they were the only four-win team in football. But the way they approached the game, the way they approached practice, on game days, and everything in between was different. Could have won upwards of seven or eight games last year. And while that's great, and while the hard reset took place and is further along than anybody had ever, you know, wished or could have hoped rationally, with a first-time head coach, first-time GM, first-time coordinators, Kyler Murray coming back late in the season, it's this is the best-case scenario. So far, so good. It couldn't be better than right now rationally speaking. And then going into free agency, they added added a couple pieces, added a corner, added a couple interior defensive linemen, added an offensive line. It's like, okay, so starting to fill the holes. Boring is good. I've said that a lot. Boring wins. Boring wins. And then you go into the draft. They had 12 picks. Many pundits say the Cardinals won the draft. 
they were able to fill all the needs. Wide receiver, pass rusher, corner, 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 offensive line, t- backup tight end or you know starting tight end two, depending on the package. Corner, RB2, set to be RB1 when James Conner moves on or retires. I mean, I'm assuming James Conner will be around for the next couple of years, hopefully. Offensive line depth, steals in the late rounds. Xavier Thomas from Clemson, edge rusher, steal. Only dropped so far because he had injuries in college. And then you look at it, it's like, man, this roster is really starting to form. And Monty Osford is doing everything necessary in an effort to position this team to win. So all of those things are true. And I'm going to compare that in a positive way when the comparison is is on the negative side. Whenever Steve Kime used to do anything right and really start to get the wheels in motion for the Cardinals, they were still so far behind because of everything he did up until that point. I used to say it every day, as you'll know this, I used to say, he, he wasn't on ground level. So, yeah, he was digging himself out of a hole, but the Cardinals organization was like halfway up to ground level. They didn't have their feet on the ground yet. And with this, while positive, and while this is what's necessary in an effort to rebuild foundation and substantiate talent and growth, the Cardinals still don't have an incredibly talented roster as pertaining to experience on the NFL field. They've got sky's the limit potential with the young guys, with the rookies. Sky's the limit. Second year guys, sky's the limit. But how many players who are slated to be starters, like what percentage have played more than a couple years in the league? 60? 50 and I and I and I know that that's normally how roster construction is. This is just for lack of a better phrase on steroids because the Cardinals had so many needs, they have so many draft picks, and Monty Oswald drafted so well that it's the perfect storm of is it enough to be able to roll this roster out in week one with so much inexperience, regardless of how well players played in college, it's the NFL. Sure, most of it's going to translate, but when you see that, it's it could be like clown cars in week one because, you know, nobody knows. Like, it's, their, it's the first game for so many players who are most likely going to be starters. And again, this isn't a situation where players who are not deserving of a starting role are starting or don't have the talent level to start are starting due to need because of poor roster construction. No. Max Melton's good enough to start. Elijah Jones is good enough to start if all of this tracks from where they were in college. Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously. Darius Robinson, obviously. But the harsh reality is this roster is not ready yet to win this year. Could they make a push? Of course. Like, this is something that, again, we're going to talk about this a million times between now and week one. We're going to have more and more you know, information to synthesize and veer this conversation one way or the other. But if you look at the roster right now, it's a bunch of young guys, a couple pillar stars, and then a handful of veterans who, you know, have either joined the team this year or have been with the Cardinals for, you know, a handful of years. And I know that, you know, you want your best players to be your youngest players, obviously. That's how sustained success happens. But for 2024, at least during the first month, six weeks, we have no idea what's actually going to translate. And as of right now, there's not much of a safety net if the young guys don't pan out. Now, that's not to say that it's cataclysmic if the Cardinals start one in three. It's not. But as of right now, where we sit, before going into even, you know, rookie minicamp that starts on Friday. Looking at the roster, there is a lot of weight held in the second-year guys from last year and the rookies from this year. And if Monty Osford hits on 70% of them, it's going to be great. And you'll still have Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. And you'll still have James Conner and Kyler Murray and a good offensive line on the right side from last year. 
You add Jonah Williams. You still have, you know, you still have Trey McBride, who's going to be a, who's going to be an absolute bona fide star, like exposing everybody who doesn't know who the hell he is. Like he is going to be under the spotlight in a good way in 2024. But then you've got Michael Wilson, who hasn't been healthy. You got Greg Dorch, who's never had that pressure put on him. And listen, that's not knocking him. He's been great. Everybody loves him. But expectations and being a guy who gets plugged in when other players get hurt, when you are have way more losses than wins, or it's garbage time, is a much different thing than actually being scouted for, scouted against, by opposing defensive coordinators and head coaches. So with that, as I go very long on this segment, I just wanted to have a conversation like, it's great that things are happening in a positive manner for this team. And there's still a very long way to go. So we could be looking at 2025 for the, can the Cardinals win more games than they lose conversation? And that's okay. It's just the natural progression of rebuilding from the ground up. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals. With that, the Cardinals need more talent. They need more talent. They need more veteran talent. There's one name who's visiting the Cardinals today, Zay Jones, that I mentioned last week, I will mention again today, would be a perfect addition to the wide receiver room. Why? I'll discuss it next. Locked on Cardinals. Your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Monopoly Go. All right, game off. we got to pause here. Talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You've already talked about that. Yes. I have, and there's so much good stuff to talk about with this game that I can't get enough of it. In Monopoly Go, you can deal with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock, and there's so much to get. Unique stickers you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with, hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. And Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasures or a Robot Pachinko Machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So, so get off the bench. Go download it now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals. Your first listen. Free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked on Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. You guessed it. Your team. Every day. So let me just compose myself here for a sec. It's hard to stay grounded at times, especially when so many fun things are happening. So many additions are being made. Kyler Murray is healthy. The offensive line isn't been this strong in a decade. James Conner's got a running mate in the backfield. Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, wanted to come with Trey McBride, tight end one. The defense has improved. You have Mac Wilson and Kazir White, two absolute maulers in the middle of the field. You've got three young corners who will be jockeying for position for, for starting snaps to go along with Sean Murphy Bunting and Garrett Williams out of Syracuse from last year. Bija Ojolari has a running mate in Darius Robinson off the edge. Darius Robinson can play on the interior of the defensive line when you have Bilal Nichols and Justin Jones to back him up. And then you have, you know, the the trusted Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson over the top. There's a lot of things to be excited about, and, and, and rightfully so. And... I, especially with the schedule that they've got, I'll pop this back up on the screen. I still have it here. They play some tough opponents, Bears, Lions, Jets with Aaron Rodgers, Chargers, Rams, 49ers, Seahawks, Packers, Vikings, Dolphins, Bills, and then the Rams, 49ers, and Seahawks on the road. Like, 
if they win six games or seven games next year, like I mentioned yesterday, that's between 50 and 75% increase from last year. That's a win. If you went from eight to 12, that would be obviously a bigger win because your, your baseline is higher. But the reality is this could be bumped up from the 2023 just bona fide proof of concept. Can Monty Osford build a roster? Can Jonathan Gannon, Nick Rallis, and Drew Petzing coach? That to a proof of concept in 2024 with some expectations that, that are, you know, linked to the infusion of talent that they got in free agency and then Monty Osford's second draft. And then 2025 with the money they're going to have to spend, I think they're going to have about 100 million to spend, 90 million. That's when you have a young core, then you can add pieces, maybe overspend a little bit to get some guys that are absolute plug and play game makers, uh, game changers. It's going to be interesting. I don't, going into the season, I'm not going to go into the expectations they're going to make the playoffs. I'm not going with the expectations that they're going to win the NFC West. I'm going it going into it with the expectation the Arizona Cardinals will play the right way. They'll be prepared. They've got more talent, and it's going to be fun. As of right now, you know, May 7th, a lot can change. The Cardinals need more. And Zay Jones is visiting the team. Zay Jones has, you know, he's been in the league a handful of years. Started with Buffalo, uh, then went to the Raiders, and then with Jacksonville. And two years ago, he had uh, over 800 yards receiving his first year in Jacksonville. And um, that was before Calvin Ridley got there and before Evan Ingram. Like, Evan Ingram was a real force the second half of two years ago, and then they hit their stride, and that was it. But Zay Jones is a capable taller veteran wide receiver that could take the place of Chris Moore and Zach Pascal combined. I know Zach Pascal plays special teams. Cool. Sign somebody else who plays special teams. The offense is the most important thing for this organization right now. So when you look at their roster still incomplete, I think Zay Jones would be a home run. One year, four mil, one year, three mil, something like that. Two year, ten mil, six mil guaranteed. If you want, if you want to give him a little extra juice, maybe do a, a team option after the first season. You know, whatever makes sense. Visiting the Titans, I don't know who would want to play with Tennessee over Kyler Murray. Will Levis showed flashes of oh baby doll, he could be very good, and they're stacked now. Um, but I feel like Zay Jones just fits in. He doesn't need his eight targets a game to be happy. If somebody were to get injured, he can move into that wide receiver two role and produce. Michael Wilson has injury concerns. He just does. Greg Dorch is unproven. When he's had the opportunity, he's performed. And he hasn't had the pressure put on him to actually produce. That's not to say he won't. That's not taking away anything he's done up until this point. He also plays a completely different – he's got a completely different skill set than Zay Jones or any other outside wide receiver. So I think it's a very low risk, risk potentially medium to high reward. It's another red zone threat. I, I just don't think I, – I don't think there's a downside there. And I did mention to the Cardinals another position they need to bolster is their pass rush. Like this roster is still incomplete. I mentioned Bud Dupree in passing because he only made three mil last year against Atlanta. He's not even close to what he was when he was in Pittsburgh three teams ago, a handful of years ago, but they need bodies. They need guys. You know, SPRs or, or DPRs, situated, situational or designated pass rushers. Just see quarterback hit quarterback. They need as many as they can have as many as they can get, as many as they can sign. Because another thing about having a young team kind of in flux with, you know, veterans uh, peppered around in different positions, you know, Justin Justin Jones and Bilal Nichols and the interior defensive line. You've got, you know, your, your veterans on the offensive line. You've got, you know, some veteran depth pass rushers. And we'll see about Zayvon Collins. I don't mention Zayvon Collins a lot because there hasn't been a reason to mention Zayvon Collins a lot. They believe in him. He's obviously great for the locker room. They, everybody loves him. He's just got to produce. This will be his, his second year off the edge if that's where they want to move him. 
And, you know, we'll see. If he ends up producing, this is going to change things dramatically. But nothing's happened yet, given the opportunity. But this year is different from last year because if they're able to sign, and I mentioned this last year, let me, let me start here. It was a proven year for the Cardinals that they proved to themselves that they've got the right system in place, the right personnel, the right coaches. Not so much personnel. The right coaches and the right system in place. This year is a proven deal to show free agents, hey, it's different here in the Valley. It's different now. So you bring in a couple pass rushers, and they can ball out as a, as a unit, as a team. Then you're looking at money to spend next year, and I can guarantee you, Free agents who signed a one-year deal with the Cardinals this year know exactly how much money they have to spend next year. One-year prove-it deal. Hey, we're the new Cardinals. That's what they say to the players. Players say, hey, I'm still I'm still worth a pretty good-sized contract. Come play a year. Bingo, bango. You're making beautiful music and maybe making a push for the playoffs this year. Who knows? Should Kyler Murray running the ball be omitted from the offense because of how many skill position players they have not only in the run game, but in the pass attack. I'll discuss that next as we wrap up here. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win on your own, of your own. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks a bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Final segment, Alex Clancy here. Hi, how's it going? This is a fun show today. It's a fun show today. It's a lot... It's just a lot. There's so many different layers of conversation to be had about this team. I think glamorizing where they are now roster-wise is going to wane a little bit. Because, listen, the draft, I, Monty Osfort nailed the draft. Position of need, all of the uh, all the draft nerds loved the players, loved the Max Melton pick, loved the Xavier Thomas pick late, loved the tackle pick out of Texas late. Obviously loved Marvin Harrison Jr., But we just haven't seen it yet. And there's a big jump from looks good on tape in college, measures well, good dudes, going to be great for the locker room, all that, all that good stuff. When that kickoff whistle blows in week one, all of that's out the window. So if you're looking at proven entities on the Arizona Cardinals roster right now, There's some in very obviously important positions. But there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of snaps for rookies next year. And if somebody may need a couple months to be elevated to the next level, there's not a whole bunch of veteran employees on the Arizona Cardinals roster. Like corner, Sean Murphy Bunsen. Garrett Williams, year two as a veteran? Is that what we're looking at? Pass rush? You're looking at Cam Thomas to come back out of nowhere? Remember him? Pass rusher, wide receiver. Massive need still. And by massive, I mean to add depth to those positions would pay off very well for the Cardinals because they'd have options instead of just go get them youngins go get them rookie go get them second year the two leading pass rushers for the Arizona Cardinals most likely going into the season will be a rookie and a second year player could be better and if they and if they ball out fantastic we've at least seen what the second year players can do in an NFL game. Haven't seen anything from the rookies yet, obviously. Should Kyler Murray's legs kind of be more of a backup dancer with how much talent there is on the offensive side of the ball? Again, and I sound like I, I contradicted myself there. Like, well, if there's so much talent, then why do they need to bring in veterans? This is all future pacing stuff still because the season hasn't started yet. But yeah, you, 
you want to have backups. Kyler Murray now has more options with skill position players than he ever has in the NFL. He's got the best offensive line he ever has in the NFL. That's to say that Jonah Williams can come in and just be plug and play, left tackle or right tackle, whatever they decide. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. As long as they're comfortable with it and the block schemes work, whether it be the run or the pass, it doesn't matter. James Conner, Trey Benson. Michael Carter, maybe. Damari DiMarcato, maybe. And we'll see what the depth chart looks like. Marvin Harrison Jr., Michael Wilson, Greg Dortch, Trey McBride, Tip Raymond, and a good offensive line. Does he need, do they need to be running RPOs anymore as much as they as much as they did? Is that absolutely necessary to win in the NFL? Keeping opposing defenses honest now can just be flat out play action. Especially if Trey, and this is a lot of this is depending upon Trey Benson's ability just to come in and take big time carries in the NFL right away. That's obvious. That that's a huge component of this, as well as Michael Wilson staying healthy. But when he's healthy, he's an NFL wide receiver. We saw it right away. The game wasn't too fast for him. He catches almost everything on the sidelines. He's got a great catch radius overall, and he and Kyler Murray showed flashes, showed glimpses of what could be. You got two running backs, got three wide receivers, guys, and then you've got a tight end plus depending on what they do with Tip Raymond, if, if he's a guy who only had down numbers at Illinois because they had a terrible passing game, like Dame Parson told me from Locked on NFL, Locked on NFL Draft. He's got options. Does he need to run the ball? And I think that we could see, and this is true, and, and listen, like I've thought about this a lot, and, and this is a work in progress, so don't hold me to this. I'm not writing this in my... I was going to say writing this in my blood, which is dark. I'm not writing this in ballpoint pen. I'm writing it in pencil. Maybe you use him as a runner like the Chiefs use Patrick Mahomes. Man coverage, buy time, and you eat you eat yards like that. Maybe more like Russell Wilson when he was in Seattle. Instead of running that set up RPO where the left tackle gets an edge and Kyler Murray just takes it off tackle to the left, I just don't see as much of a need by any stretch for that this year, anything even comparable to his first four years in the league where it was necessary for Kyler Murray to run the ball. Now, sure, broken plays where he eats the gray area between a play kind of working and kind of breaking down. He's like, I'm out. That's always going to be there. But actual plays called for him to run the ball with how important his health is to the team. And I know that he tore his ACL running in the in, in the open field. Like it wasn't on, on, a, on a tackle or anything like that. But I do feel like with, with how much concerted effort there's been to adding talent and offensive line talent, around, like skill position player and offensive line talent around Kyler Murray, putting him in unnecessary harm's way is counterintuitive. And again, I know anybody can get hurt on any play. Could be the turf monster. Got him the first time. And hopefully the only time with that. Obviously, you never want anybody to get injured, regardless if it's a team you're covering or you're a team you're, you, you guys are a fan of or whatever. It's just food for thought because we've never really had this position before. Where if Marvin Harrison Jr. is and Trey Benson is and Trey McBride continues to be that maybe you don't really need to run Kyler Murray. What a great problem that would be. Should we get him some more rushing attempts? It's hard to spread it around with all these options. Drew Petzing says to himself, hopefully with a big smile on his face while brushing his teeth in the morning. That's obviously the most ideal scenario. It's just food for thought. Should, should Kyler Murray be a situational Broken play runner only. Food for thought. I like to make you think here, Locked on Cardinals. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. Without you, there is no me. Don't forget it. I'll talk to you tomorrow.